The big story this past week was the death of the last Soviet president, Mikhail Gorbachev. I don't normally get sentimental about politicians, but Gorby is an exception. He came to power during my high school years in California in the mid-1980s. Back then, our president, Ronald Reagan, called the Soviet Union the evil empire. But Gorby seemed like a nice guy. He quickly ushered in major reforms, and strange Russian words like glasnost and perestroika were all over the news. The Soviet Union opened up toward the West, and I seized the opportunity to go there in 1989, when I was 20. That's when I realized just how similar we Russians and Americans are, despite what our leaders wanted us to think. A decade later, on the 10th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, I got to film Gorbachev speaking from the balcony of the Berlin City Hall. I didn't even remember that the German Chancellor Helmut Kohl and the U.S. President George Bush were there with their wives. And I could swear Gorby gave a speech from the balcony. But it looks like my memory of the event isn't as sharp as I thought it was. I remember being in awe at seeing him from so nearby. The Germans treated Gorby like a great hero and gave him credit for uniting East and West Germany in 1990. But back home in Russia, Gorby had become a nobody and was blamed for the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. I remember watching it on TV when I was back home in California over Christmas. Four years ago, I got close to Gorby once again. I met his goddaughter, Galia, while I was in Moscow shooting my film, The Straight Guys. She told me all kinds of stories about her famous godfather. For a moment, I got my hopes up that we might get to pay Gorby a visit. But sadly, his health was fading and he wasn't up to it. Galia and I have remained friends and I have a feeling she might pop up here again someday. <laughs>